Okay, guys. Hey, there I am. Stuff's about to get crazy exciting here. Let's see, you got a shipping team on the ground, like you see here, and the knife blade that they call this. This isn't a traditional knife blade. Um, this is a equipment track or equipment trailer that I use for containers. So it has a about a half inch to an inch and a half step right here instead of having a complete knife blade. I could pound this out and make it work, but it's a in, minor inconvenience. I just can't scoop right off the ground like a lot of um, container trailers are that are designed for that. And I'll go over the trailer in a second after we do this. I have some skids down here I use um, from a company, is it ITI I think they're called? Anyway, I use these skids. There's a taller version of this that I could put underneath here that would have got me to clear this. I just haven't invested in those yet because this is a trial and error process. But getting these off the ground, I think it's called ship, Superior Containers, Superior Shipping. And they make this little device here that, you know, they obviously weld this and fabricate. You can see some pretty thick welds, some pretty thick steel on this thing. I mean, it's nothing, you know, ain't reinventing the wheel here. Uh, there's quite a few companies that make these. I think it's Superior Shipping. I got this one for $125. And it cleats into the side. You see this hole right here. These knuckles, these corners on shipping things will all be the same. And that goes in there like so. Put my glove back on. Protect my fragile little hands. Um, the idea is we want to get this thing off the ground about six inches to scoop this uh, tail end underneath here and get it to about right here. Once I scoop it under there, I can slide it underneath the trailer pretty easy without much effort. So this thing. So here's the little, little round edge, same size as that. So it goes in this way. When you turn it this way, it's kind of locked in there. Same thing that all the containers use for, for any container attachment. This right here, we're just talking about a Husky 12-ton jack. You can go with a bigger jack than this. The problem you're gonna have is clearance issues. See how we're not clearing now, so I have to pull this out and dig this up a little bit. Um, or get some thinner wood or go without the wood. If you try and do this without the wood, um, it will definitely, sink this thing into the ground to the position to where um, your cargo or your shipping container could tip over a little bit or fall off the, the jack and if you like your toes this is not a good thing to do so I try to be smart about it lay a platform down there and get it nice and clean don't get me wrong I have used a bottle jack without wood before it just doesn't have the same results <laughs> results you're looking for so anyway Enough, probably not. Yeah, a little bit more. A shovel would make sense, guys. You can use your wood like this. Um, I just kind of improvise. This is perfection. I didn't prep this site before I started filming. Like everything I do, it's a one, one take shot. No editing. <laughs> so, anyway, put this back in the corner, flip it up. Maybe I steal things to lift this from. Slide the jack in here. And this is like I said, it's a standard bottle jack. You can get a Home Depot. Um, make sure you tighten it down here. Little handles, most of these are little telescopic handles. Now you get a bunch of dirt out of mine. Um, the dirt out. Put the handle right here. I always put the handle of this thing, a place where I can stabilize if I need to. And this is the part where you want to make sure your fingers are out of the way. And if you have to reach underneath a shipping container at any time, don't suggest it while it's in the air. But if you have to, make sure you have one free hand, preferably the hand closest to your cell phone, <laughs> so you can call someone and tell them how dumb you are and that you need to put your hand in underneath that shipping container. Yes, yeah, so we're just jacking this up. It's a 12 ton jack, very basic bottle jack. Um, I said there's a Husky from Home Depot. This is from, uh, I guess I think it's a Shipping Containers Plus or Superior Shipping Containers. I'll put a link in the picture in the description on this video. I just, a lot of people don't know how to get these off the ground. You can use a farm jack, and I do a farm jack on the front sometimes, or even these cups sometimes. On a farm jack, sometimes you're gonna have a hard time getting underneath these when they're too low to the ground. Most farm jacks are gonna have about a three to four inch sweep on them, believe it or not. Um, they're not really thinking about getting off the ground. It's for, you know, lifting Jeeps up or, you know, pulling chains tight on the farm, um, being how you use it. I use it with a chain, so I'll wrap a chain through here and across to give me the gap I need and then put a farm jack. I'll show another video of that if people are wondering about that or how that works. So um, this is a basic two by six. Um, I have a bunch of them cut down in time, inside my truck at all times, just in case we ever need them for anything. Um, these big chunks, I use them for stabilizing my trailer. 
I also use them if I have a, a flat tire. I had, a, I had two flats the other day and drive up on two of these. One of these is a bridge to get up in there, a ramp, and uh, change your flat tire in your trailer if you have dual uh, rear axles or dualies. So it makes it really easy. Anyway, so we're gonna try and shove this underneath there. I already have one on the other side. You can see it's balancing out. I'll show you an overview when we're done. Uh, close up view so you can see what we're actually using here. And I'll try to put it in here as a starter. Just in case this thing kind of gave out, we'd already have four inches off the ground. We'd probably work with that if we needed to. So I'm trying to get the whole six inches. I'm trying to get this thing flipped on its side. And as you can see, it's pretty easy. I'm sucking wind because we're up in elevation here. And I've just been doing nothing lately, so this is my exercise. And we're almost at the point where you can flip this sideways. Other than about a quarter inch of getting what we need. We'll max this out probably. I don't know what the, whole, the throw is on this. Like I said, a 20 ton will get you a lot better throw on the jack. Um, the problem is, you have to go even further to get it underneath this thing to start. So this wall tether, I like the size of that. I don't want any more than this. So as you can see over here, the block is in now. I have it set on there. I'll bring this around to get you a better idea. Ugh. So here's our jack. Here's our, let me call this a leveling block or leveling something. Um, yeah. I guess it makes sense you're using this to get this up to level this, but anyway, um, so yeah, so superior containers leveling chop or something like that. And like I said, I'll do a picture of that in the description so you guys have a better idea. And like I said, so here's my 12 ton jack. My wood is in place. My skids are down there. I'm gonna have to realign those. It's precarious, but it's worth saving your deck. And I'm gonna go ahead and just turn this and we'll see it go down. And now we're sitting firmly on that four by six right there, it's in the ground. And I'm just gonna loosen a little bit more. The jack's gonna kinda do its own job right there. We'll finalize it when we get it out of there. Um, and like I said, I'm just showing this a lot of people are wondering, how do you get a jack off the ground? A bottle jack you guys can all get from Home Depot or Harbor Freight River, obviously. There's no real questions there. Um, with this particular product here, you could weld your own up, um, which is totally a possibility, or you can go online yeah, like I said, I won't have necessarily a link, but I will show you the picture of where I got mine from, and you can grab one yourself. So, let me see if I got this thing lined up properly. So, if I turn this sideways, that comes out, because you see the size of the hole. When you go in, and you turn this way, now it's not coming out anymore. It's, it's a very simple locking system. So, uh, if you look at semi-trucks going down the road, they have something similar. It's in a cone fashion that goes up underneath here when they pull in to, you know, ports or whatever else. They go up and they literally just clip a little piece and it, it turns something similar to this like a cone shaped piece sideways that's what locks them on their trucks and that's considered a safe enough lock to go down the freeway like that as opposed to where i'm doing them with straps and chains because i'm not driving a land all semi truck fifty thousand dollar trailer so all right well i'll show you kind of here where we're going all right what we're going here i want to get a clearance enough to get this to about right here and then lift i will actually move forward and i'll put these blocks in place because he did a phenomenal job on keeping my deck right here free from a lot of extra wear and tear. You can see my deck, you can see where I just slid this off, but I had the pucks underneath it in the plastic. And there's dirt granules to get in there and mess up a little bit, but it can really damage your deck. A lot of guys go right on the wood or metal to metal, metal to metal slides, but you imagine how fast you start grinding out, out this 10 inch wide by quarter inch thick steel, and then eventually you have to redo it. This has all been welded in place and rosette welded along the sides here, welded into the original diamond plate. And then these bumpers, as you can see, get a lot of wear and tear. Um, these bumpers get a lot of usage too, and they're all welded, but they're removable. I mean, so you can put them inside a stake bed. So anyway, this was already here. The tail was there. I just connected the pieces that we weren't on directly on wood. It's 10 inches wide by quarter inch thick. And you got a little bit of spots here and there where you see it gets a little bit of grind on the plastic. I don't know if I'm in line right there but it's a little grind in the plastic but i mean in general it does a pretty good job this would just kill your wood um right well if it was just metal right on that even the skids on the wood would be hard um the metal makes a big difference so this one i got in a hurry never painted them i'm gonna go ahead and hit those up with a grinder or you know, uh, just a sanding uh, wheel probably this weekend repaint them get it cleaned up i'm gonna be buying a larger trailer here pretty soon i've been talking about it for a while i've got a couple lined up so i'm gonna buy one here pretty soon and it's to be a 40 footer, a full tilt like this, where it does tilt down. You can get what you need out of the, the full tilt to be able to load on your own and be able to drop off on your own. Um, this has two hydraulic rams underneath them, some have a scissor lift. I like this design, it's very stable. 
Um, it's overpowered for what I do, believe it or not, even though it doesn't look like a big trailer. The weight capacity in this thing is stronger than anything I carry. These things are only 4,700 pounds dry for 20 footers. Even a tall cube, about 5,100 pounds, and unless you just stuff it full of items, which I don't, um, I'm using them you know, empty. It's a very easy tow back and forth. So anyway, just want to go over that. Like I said, guys, I will put a link to this part right down here. Bottle Jack's obviously Husky, Home Depot, very simple, or Harbor Freight, wherever you want to go. A couple of uh, four by sixes down here. Um, and then we have this superior shipping container leveling apparatus as own form. So like I said, it's it's nothing super fancy. You can build this yourself with a cost of metal, 125 bucks. I think it was free shipping. I couldn't build this uh, for cheaper than that right now with metal. So um, anyway, that's just an idea showing you what we got going on here, guys. Like I said, I'm gonna line this up on these skids um, when I put it on the trailer and I'm gonna just shove underneath it. Um, it'll catch these bumper rails as it gets up. I'll flip this one out for the longer one. It'll catch it, and it'll just push itself right up on top of you. You just shove right underneath the, the container, and uh, you'll winch the last uh, 15 inches or so on my chain there. We have a winch there, obviously. We use the winch to get the last 15, 20 inches if I want to level it off. And you got to know where your, your fulcrum point is on your trailer, so you're not putting a lot of weight in the back or vice versa. Um, but for this, I'm just I'm flipping this around to do a video on this container uh, to advertise it. And then uh, it'll be right back off the trailer, and I'm heading back down to pick up another one. So... Anyway, guys, this camera's probably going all over the place. I'm not paying attention, but that's how you use the superior leveling apparatus jack, whatchamacallit thing, to lift a container off the ground. All right, man. Take care, everyone. And, of